everyone. This is Dr. Joseph Sarkisian. We're going to present the general uh, tissue level and bone level uh, drill kit for Z systems. A quick overview of the uh, different bits, starting with the round burr, which is used to mark the ridge, and then the pilot drill, and then we progress with the different sized drills depending on which implant we're placing. So we either go along the green route to place the five millimeter implants, or we go along the red route to place the four millimeter implants, and the yellow route to place the smallest implants, the 3.6 millimeter. So as we notice, all the burrs that drill in bone are made out of zirconia. They are metal free. So to demonstrate, we have one stop for each burr. The stop is inserted from behind. There are three slots, each corresponding to a different length of the implant, eight, 10, and 12 millimeters. So we advance it until we hear the first snap of the latch. And that's 12 millimeters. We advance it more, that's 10. And the last notch is eight millimeters. After using the drill, we remove it from the front. These first three drill bits are used with 600 rpm speed. As we progress to the thicker drills, we drop down to 300 or even 200 rpm. This is the tapping drill and it's used with this adapter. This is the ZTHA9 adapter. It's got a hex in inside. And the tapper is used at a speed of 15 to 20 RPMs. The next burr and the last one to discuss is the countersink. And again, be careful using this. Um, sometimes I have to use it sparingly. I don't go too deep with it because we still want the uh, platform to be above bone level. So we don't want to sink the implant too deep. And these are used at a speed of 400 RPM. And for these, sometimes I have to use the extender So the extender along with this is used to create the countersink. So now we will be placing our first implant. The first step is to spot the ridge. And then we go with a pilot drill. Now, of course, if you have a surgical guide, you will be using it. But let's assume you don't have a surgical guide. Now we have to prepare this pilot drill with the stop. So we are placing a 12 millimeter implant. So we are putting the stop at the 12 millimeter mark. Right there. So we're operating at 600 RPM. So how I usually go around this is I don't go the full length. I always stop two to four millimeters before the target depth. And we take an X-ray with the marker. So that's the x-ray marker and based on how the x-ray comes out we make our corrections. 
So now the marker is actually at eight millimeters. So let's assume everything is correct and we're going to go straight down to the 12 millimeter depth. So that was the pilot drill. Now the next drill is the one up. Again, we have to use its corresponding stop. We continue at 600 RPM. Of course, you could do this with 800 or 400. It doesn't matter too much, as long as you have good irrigation. Next one. Here you could switch to 200 or 300 RPM. And use a steady hand so you don't make an uneven osteotomy. Two hundred or four hundred RPM, even. So for soft bone, we may want to omit this last step. We'll assume that we have normal bone. Two hundred RPM. In between each step or in between every other drill, it would be a good idea to irrigate with uh, sterile saline. So we have completed our osteotomy, but now we are going to work on the cortical part of the bone and the tapping. This cortical drill is reserved mostly for the bone level implant. So we may not want to use it at this uh, stage because we are placing a tissue level implant. The important step after this is the tapping. Tapping drill has a hex connector and we use the adapter and gauge it. It's a contra angle. So we will be using the tapping drill at 30 RPM. So we have to hold it steady and firm. It has to be inserted along the whole depth of the osteotomy. If the torque maxes out, you have to reverse it and if it maxes out completely you may want to completely reverse it run the last drill bit through the osteotomy and repeat this step again now we're going to see if we can get the tapper all the way down to the depth of the osteotomy All right, we are at 12 millimeters. So now we're gonna reverse it. It's like a truck reversing. Okay, cool. cool. Now we have the internal threads, which we can easily see. At this stage, we're going to irrigate with saline, definitely irrigate to get all the debris out. So for the tissue level, as you notice, there is a little tulip or a platform that's wider. And the platform is usually six millimeter in total diameter, whereas the implant is five millimeters in diameter. So you have to plan ahead when we're placing implants in confined spaces. This is done at 400 RPM.
So as you noticed, I didn't really go too far. It was barely a millimeter or two. So now we are ready to place the implant. After irrigating the socket with sterile saline, we have the transfer bit that comes in every single package with the implant. This transfer piece has a breakage point. This point will break if we exceed the torque settings. So this hex goes into the adapter. So the transfer piece is now engaged in the adapter, which is a contra-angle adapter. And this will have to be inserted into the handpiece. And now we open the implant box. Now I'm assuming that this implant is in the box. Now we're going to carry it out of the box without touching the implant. Careful, you don't drop it. So you have to have some platform, some sterile platform where it may fall onto. The implant has to be wet, so you may want to dip it in sterile saline. The desired torque is 32 newton centimeter, and the speed is the same as the tapping drill, which should be around 15 to 30 RPMs. So we have to hold it steady and exert pressure. So this is going well, except let's assume that there's a lot of friction. There's two things we can do. We can reverse it and then reinsert. But if you have too much friction, then you have to completely remove the implant and run the last drill bit, run the tapper, and reinsert the implant. If you need a little more torque, you could actually use the wrench. In order to use the wrench, we have to disengage the adapter and we use the wrench adapter for this purpose. Okay, now this will be set to maybe a little more than 32, maybe like 40 Newton centimeters. And now we're ready to complete the insertion. Remember, this is a tissue level implant. So we're about to stop somewhere here. We're not gonna drive it all the way into the bone. As you notice, we are at about two to three millimeters above bone. So a small part of the tulip is under the bone, but most of the platform is above. And that's what we want because we don't want to deal with too much gum tissue in order to restore this implant. So before we place any sutures, uh, if there are any sutures involved, we have to cover the opening of the implant with a cover screw. This is the driver for that.
Don't use too much force, just very light finger pressure and that's it. We want to be able to remove it. Healing time is four to six months, depending on bone type. In four to six months, we will be placing the abutment. That will be another video presentation. However, I want to stress that part of this platform is supragingival, and that is what we like because when we're restoring this, we, were, we will be able to prep the margins of the implant. The implant margins are preppable. The FDA has cleared Z systems to allow us to prep the actual margins of the implant. And that is a great benefit because we can actually put a bevel and continue along the gingival contours to get a better adaptation of the future crown. When we prep, we have to use new red stripe diamonds. And what I like doing is to actually use a football, a red stripe football, to prep this, place a chamfer or a bevel before I screw on the abutment. Well, this summarizes this tutorial video on the tissue level Z systems implants and the instrument workflow. I hope it was helpful. Visit my YouTube channel or Instagram account for many more real life scenarios of these incredibly biocompatible and versatile implants. Thank you for your attention.